Oh, good one, Casey. Here they come, the real estate guys, Pete Belcastro and Joe Brett. And hello, everyone. Welcome to the Real Estate Show on KMED. It is Saturday, June the 17th of 2017. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the real estate guys in the house here at KMED with you today. And thanks for joining us here as we're, look at this, halfway through the month of June. And uh, summer is here, Joe. Weather is getting better. Um, real estate market continues to amaze me how uh, how dynamic it is, how much demand there is out there. And Gee, we had a this week at John L. Scott had a record number of listings, uh, over 40 just in our offices <laughs> in Medford and Ashland. So people are beginning to see that this is the time. The prices are such right. that, uh, you know, people are coming through there. Anyway, we'll see what happens today. Today on the show, Brian Schlafke from John L. Scott is with us. Uh, uh, Joe, uh, Brian, uh, well, we remember Brian back in the Remax yep. days. <laughs> Way back. He was here in our show yep. then. Yep. So that's been a number of years ago. And, of course, we're all together at John L. Scott for our Market Watch show today. And we'll get Brian's impact on what he's thinking the market is like. And he also posed an interesting question question that our listeners are going to ponder today because he put out on an on email this week yeah. about what is the value of a working marijuana farm today? What, someone wants to sell one. What's it worth? That's, a, that's an interesting question. I've been pondering that thing for like days now trying to come up with an answer you, for that. You're, we'll see if we do. You're probably not the only one. Yeah, pondering it's, that. It's I mean, there are a lot of people looking at our marketplace and our rural properties thinking the exact same thing yeah. because we're just in a hotbed. Well, what does it take to have so many plants already in the ground? What's that worth to somebody? Are you going to sell a place and how how does that affect real estate? Anyway, that's what Brian's here today. We'll hear all about that. Last week, in case you missed our show, all, uh, estate sales, Lance uh, Landers from Ionic Estate Sales. You can go back and listen to that show at realestateshoworegon.com. We have an estate sale somewhere in your life, right? I mean, and you better be ready for them because it's not your it's not your mother's garage sales anymore. Oh, These are man. sophisticated things that try to get top dollar for things, and they do a fabulous job I, of. Anyway. Again, it was just great information. We went out to Talent to look at a property together after the show Saturday, and there was the green sign with the big finger pointing yeah. to the Ionic yeah. estate sale, yeah. just and as you got off the freeway. Now, next week here on the show, our last week, uh, last show of the year, uh, Glenn Cunningham, who's the CPA from Nagel and Padilla, he comes here every year with us. He'll be here next week. His topic is 1031 exchanges. They have been an increase. They have seen huge increases and people wanting to take advantage of 1031 exchanges. And, and we're here all about that. Why? What's good about that? What should you or should you not? That'll be next week. Glenn is a brilliant guy. I always encourage our listeners to get the free hour out of him that we provide through the real estate show. Because otherwise, Pete and I are paying to well, do business with him. He's smarter than, he's smarter <laughs> than and that's believe why, me. That's why we invite him on. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Anyway, that's it today here on the real estate show. We'll begin soon. Pete and Joe, the real estate guys, coming up. Brian Schlafke standing by. It's a John L. Scott market watch show coming up next here on kmed here at the real estate show we've begun our sixth year of weekly programs and are pleased to tell you that john l scott real estate of southern oregon is a new partner on our shows in the coming weeks and months ahead you'll meet jim remley the managing principal broker and others who make john l scott real estate the top selling office in the region in the last 12 months they've sold over 600 million dollars worth of property in jackson county so we welcome john l scott to the real estate show family you can visit a john l scott office in medford center or downtown ashland a great home starts with a great mortgage rate. Hi, my name is Guy Giles, sales manager at Ditech Mortgage. I'm committed to finding the best products and rates for my clients. As a direct lender and servicer of our loans, we can offer low rates on VA, conventional, FHA, and USDA loans that others cannot. Let me show you by giving me a chance to compete on your next home loan. Call me at 541-944-6987. Ditech Mortgage is your home loan lending partner you can count on. Did you know that more than 400 square miles of the Rogue Valley drain through Bear Creek? Do you know what else ends up in the creek? Everything that goes down the storm drains. 
Leaves, animal waste, garbage, landscaping, even pesticides all end up unfiltered right in the creek. That's water residents of Jackson County depend on. At Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District, we have free resources to help you make a difference right where you live. Look us up at jswcd.org or find us on Facebook. After all, it's free. And the only thing better than free is clean water. Choosing all cities as your property manager will bring you peace of mind. Hello, I'm Laurel Adams, co-owner of All Cities Property Management. For the past 13 years, our business has provided homeowners with detailed monthly reports, including exact copies of vendor bills and explanations of work performed. We use these same procedures and have systems in place to create optimal communication between you, the owner, and our office. Contact us to discuss your individual needs at 245-8811. We provide property management with peace of mind. The Jackson County Home Builders Association is your resource for home construction information in Jackson County. Your HBA can answer questions for everything you want to know about home construction, remodeling, and more. I'm Brad Bennington, Executive Officer of the Home Builders Association. Your HBA supports the home building and remodeling industry and advocates for safe, sustainable, and affordable housing. Learn more about the benefits of doing business with our members at hbajc.com. A great home starts with a great mortgage rate. Hi, my name is Guy Giles, Sales Manager at Ditech Mortgage. I'm committed to finding the best products and rates for my clients. As a direct lender and servicer of our loans, we can offer low rates on VA, conventional, FHA, and USDA loans that others cannot. Let me show you by giving me a chance to compete on your next home loan. Call me at 541-944-6987. Ditech Mortgage is your home loan lending partner you can count on. Rental owners often tell me the thing they like most about our company is that we have organized systems in place and respond in a timely manner. Hi, I'm Laurel Adams, co-owner of All Cities Property Management. Today's property management requires a professional who can negotiate the gap between renters and rental owners. At All Cities, we work to protect your investment while following Oregon and federal rental laws. We provide property management with peace of mind. Visit us online at allcitiesprop.com. Pete and Joe, the real estate guy, is here, and thanks for listening to our show here on KMED Radio. Every week for almost the last six years, we've shared real estate-related information with you and hope that you'd learn from us and our panels, too. We personally talk with many of you and offer free advice on property values, do's and don'ts of selling and buying, and lots of other topics, too. So feel free to contact us anytime via email at Pete or Joe at realestateshoworegon.com. And, and thanks, thanks for making, making the, the Real Estate, Estate Show part of your weekend. Welcome to the Real Estate Show on KMED. June 17th is our date. Pete Belcaster and Joe Breath, the Real Estate Guys, with you this week. We're both real estate brokers with John L. Scott in Southern Oregon, and we get together with you once a week here on KMED to talk about all sorts of real estate-related issues and topics through almost eight years and 400 shows. And uh, we're still we're still standing here, Joe. It's still fun to, every weekend, get together with different guests, talk about what's going on out in the market. And uh, from the doldrums of 2009, July of 2009, covered? boy, has Both this thing the changed <laughs> totally. I mean, it's, uh, it's crazy. And, and it's great to have Brian Shaftley in today because it, Brian was with us seven, eight years ago when this all started. And that entire time, he has been one of our top agents in the Valley and on the front lines, really ready to uh, give us some good insights today. That's uh, quite an introduction there, uh, Brian, uh, for you there. Uh, nice to have you here today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. so uh, just tell us, uh, uh, you, you've seen, you've been up, you've, th- you've been through the ups and downs of this market, as they always are. Uh, here we're sitting in June this year, halfway through the year. What's your impression of what's happening this year? You know. Talk right it, into that thing, but right there. It, oh. So, no, you're, you're good. You're good. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, it, it hasn't stopped um, from, I, I can't even think back how long we're back on the roller coaster, you know, heading up. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it just hasn't slowed down. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think what you've probably talked about in the past is our listings are down, which which just slows, slows us up a bit. But uh, uh, I had a, another agent tell me that that uh, she went and showed a home in the two hundred thousand dollar range, which you know really isn't chump change. No, and, it's a lot uh, of money. And this was just one particular home, six competing offers, mm. and that means five people are still out there looking right. mm-hmm. looking for that uh, that property. Mm-hmm. And that's just one person. I mean, one home. One person in mm-hmm. one price range mm-hmm. that we see. It's uh, it, it's all over the board, isn't it? There's not one particular area that seems to be 
doing better than another. Is there? I mean, it seems when you look across the county, both Jackson and Josephine counties, it, it's there's just activity everywhere. It's not pockets of it. It seems to be everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah, right. You know, when I look at the the recent statistics, uh, days on market is always a real telling telling mm-hmm. tale. And, and I, I was looking at that today, and and you're seeing some 16 days on market on a, on, a, on a few of the markets in the valley and. Uh, when I started, 90 was the average. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when we start seeing properties that are, you know, to go show our clients that have been there for more than two weeks, we're wondering, you know, what's wrong with this one? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. just to tell you what you just said, in, in May of this year, uh, compared to May of 2016, uh, average days in the market is down 27%. The average is 30 days. And that's one of the things that uh, uh, you try to do as a real estate. You, you want to get everything sold in 30 days if you can. It's impossible but look at this. The average is 32 days. And we still know that there's lots of properties that have been out there a whole long, a whole lot, lot of time, which is you know, upping the, the average days. But there, that also tells me that, what, there's a whole lot of stuff going pretty darn fast. Right. 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 All right. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see where that takes us. Right. Interesting. As, as you look at the five-year changes that we see in our stats uh, year over year over time, Southwest Medford has come on recently, but... A lot of that has been because we've seen that surge in brand new building around the new South Medford High School, and there was some good uh, dirt over there, and I know Coda Homes and Rob Fellows has got some over there, and those builders have been busy, and it, like they always tell you, it kind of lifts everybody's boat all around you out there, so I, th- I think we're seeing some of the impacts of that new construction in Southwest Medford, just as I watch my ah. own property and watch what it does. So what you're saying, okay, uh, okay, what yeah. you're saying then is that the that the Southwest Medford increase in value so much is partly due because there's a lot of new construction going on down in that area. There, there was, that makes sense, there, doesn't it? Yeah, there were some projects just primed, just waiting for the tide to turn a little bit, and, and they've really kind of given us a boost, as I've seen over the last two yeah. years. Brian Schlafke, what do you see in new construction East Medford? We see a lot of that. Where else is it taking place, do you think? Boy, right now, um, I'm uh, doing a lot with Wayne Van Way up in the east side, and, and uh, we're I think we're out of lots now in Vista Point, whereas the beginning of the Vista year. Vista Point is really, you've sold them all. They've oh, all been sold. Yeah. They just, all of a sudden, it just caught fire up there. Wow. Okay. I, I, think, okay. I, think, okay. I think we had about 12 lots at the beginning of the year, somewhere up in there, and and uh, those are gone. Then uh, he started a new upscale mm-hmm. uh, upscale um, uh, subdivision up at Panorama Heights, up off of, way up in the, in the East Hills off of Cadet. And uh, first phase is just about sold out, and he's now working on the second phase of nine homes. So, wow. and then I know, um, you know, Bunton's got some up there, and and uh, Sarage Homes, and I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. And what are the what are the, what are the price ranges up there in those homes? Uh, the last one we that that we're working on right now in Vista Points at four sixty, okay. and then up in Panorama, just because it was so expensive, the the ground was so yep. expensive, and yep. then and mm-hmm. then and then you know all the things that you have to do down at the city now. Uh, we're starting in the uh, uh, mid to low fives. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that, that's, that's, you know, that's interesting. It's better than, yeah. I suppose, the nines and the tens up there, the, the, the well, that's more also, expensive places. That's also still in the hot zone of where inventory is tight, there's demand, and there's a lot of movement and a lot of uh, buyer desire for homes in that price range, right up to mm-hmm. probably, you know, 700 right in there. I get, I get calls for lots. People will say, hey, are they selling lots? And I don't think you can find, hardly find a builder that's going to let go of a lot right now. Mm, right. They're going to keep them themselves so and build themselves. Yeah. yeah. Wow. See, yeah. look how that far that's changed. Uh, when, from the days of Brad Bennington, the CEO of the uh, Builders Association, sitting in here, uh, Brian, and, and had nothing to talk about. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, they had no, yeah, yeah. They had nobody to talk about. And we're still seeing, of course, the issues. Oh, by the way, speaking of building, they have met, apparently, with Rogue Community College. Excellent. Uh, over this, you know, these new vocation kinds of courses that they're supposed to be putting in over that bond levy that was passed. And apparently they had a meeting with uh, the trades people. They hadn't done it the last time we talked about that. So that was a good sign. Oh, you know, that's because, a real, that, that's because, addressing a real need. Yeah, because part the of the industry. issues is that there's no, the skilled the labor region. pool in our region is so low that it's causing delays in new constructions, causing delays in remote. I mean, everything is just bottled up as a result of not having enough uh, qualified and, and, and good people there to do it. To the availability of lots, this coming Wednesday at 1.30 is the land use hearing with Jackson County where Medford's urban growth boundary process takes its next steps with the county. And I think there were some items that came up. They've continued it now. But I think they're about ready to come back and close that process out. 
that's going to be the next step to bring some developable land. I don't know how much of it is not already spoken for well, do you or think already in okay, the works. Do you think we're running low? Problem. Okay, are we running low on land right now? Uh, right. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. think we are? We are mm -hmm. well, yeah. running on on developable land. Yeah. On developable land, we're running. We're running out. So those subdivisions that all were there, vacant, have all been. Uh, you know, before the recession, they've, they've all been bought up. They've all been used. They're all being built on. Correct then? Yeah, a lot, a lot wow. of uh, smart developers land banked. You know, when the yep. when the market was down, went ahead and got them, sat there until it came back. And now they're now they're going to reap the reward for that. And a okay. lot, a lot I've known through this, through watching the process of the uh, regional problem solving and the UGP expansions, a lot of that property has already got plans and acreage put aside for schools, parks, and trails. But around seven, so a lot of it is already. If it comes into the UGB, is is going to be already spoken for. It's not going to bring a bunch of brand new lots and brand new land mm -hmm. into the mix. But so far, what both of you have said is that all the new construction that you've seen, as you experience yourself, is all single family homes. You know, four hundred thousand roughly in those ranges or higher kinds of things. What about the the alternative kinds of housing? Is there any of that that you see, Brian, going on? Joe, you see, I, I don't see any of that happening. Apartment complexes, yes. Uh, there are some apartments. Multiplexes yeah. and, and apartment complexes are in the works and starting through the planning stages. They a are? Few a few. are starting to come in, but only because there's such a great demand. And it's almost a not, it's almost you can't miss if you get the right property and can build at the right price, you, you're almost destined to do well and, and to fill them up. To work with, uh, uh, investors much, Brian, in terms of looking for investment properties out there? Is that is that happening still around, do you think, or is that slowed down? You know, uh, for me, it was mostly looking for single-family residences, okay. duplexes uh, for, for rentals. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're just right on the cusp where they're, where they're not going to pencil unless they yep. put a whole bunch of cash into them. Because of their condition. Well, because of prices. prices because of prices. Well, okay, about two, okay, three years' okay. time, that has really turned a corner, mm -hmm. kind of against the investor. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because there's, there's quite a few uh, duplexes, up to fourplexes, you know, that are on the market, uh, I've noticed. I'm wondering if landlords are fearing these laws that may change, you know, landlord-tenant laws and change if they're saying, I'm going to get out. I, I hope that's not the case, but mm -hmm. that's possible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if that'll happen. I did go today, to, uh, this week, I should say, to a uh, class, one of those, you know, smart things, you know, that you do. And, 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 and But I visited, uh, I guess it's Jackson County. It may be it's only, I'm not know if it's the only one, but a the, the a zero energy home. In other words, a net zero, it has no footprint, I guess, home. And how they're constructed and, and, and uh, what they do, it was fascinating to me uh, how they're built today. But none of the homes. It's, it's what's so interesting. If you, you get th these people have a ten dollar a month energy bill, okay, and you bank electricity. You, and you do all these things that they've built. The new technology. It's fascinating. Yeah. And yet, all the new construction that I see going on around Medford, East West, Central Point, wherever, none of them are being built like that. None of them are being taken that advantage of. And they built this house. They said for two hundred and ten dollars a a square foot, mm. all energy, zero, I mean, it's absolutely yeah. something. That's what they said, that the prices have come down on solars and the kinds of things that they use in uh, the, I mean, we don't, they don't even duct, you know, ducting and everything. <laughs> they don't even do that anymore. I mean, in these houses and that's how, that's how they're being built. It's fascinating to watch. It's the, uh, it's a zero energy home, the Oregon Energy Trust, you know, they put money into those things and stuff. And uh, they say that in the future, every home will be built Exactly like this, yep, yep. Uh, with zero, in fact, in California and in Washington State, not Oregon, they have already committed that by 2020, I think in California, and 2030 in Washington State, all new construction will be built to this standard here of zero net, uh, zero energy homes. Wow. That's, that's pretty out in front of things right there. Yeah. And it's uh, affordable. Yeah. I mean, that's always been a holdup for new technology of yeah. trying to power cars in different ways and things like that is, can you make it marketably affordable for the consumer to be to be a player in the and, game, and that sort of sounds yeah. like it is. And remember, it's not just residents resi residences that are going to have to have to meet this standard. Any new commercial construction and things like that are also going to have to be zero uh, zero net, you know, zero. What are they call it? Zero net uh, uh, power, uh, whatever that's called. And it's not like <laughs> it's not like twenty years ago. You don't have like hay straw sticking out of your walls. <laughs> this, this is the real deal. The question for Brian Schlafky here today: like, Do you have people who come in and want this type of thing? Do you get demand for that? Because that's the problem. You know, really don't. Uh, I know. A couple of years ago, green homes were the big yeah. thing, yeah. Uh, and people didn't want to pay the extra to have. Yeah. They have didn't want to pay the extra. Yeah. So they, but, yeah. but it that's, did. It did cost more then. Yeah. As that was yeah. happening. Yeah. 
Well, I wonder if this is going to change. That's that. the inhibitor. I don't know. It really is a lot of times for new technology and and consume. You know, if I'm a consumer, I can live with what I got if I don't have to pay extra for something that sounds good. But no. I'm okay just how I am. But you know, after your energy bills over time, maybe you're not as good off as you think you are. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find that out. What else you think is going on, buyers? Where are they coming from, uh, Brian? That you're dealing with. Uh, what are they looking for in price ranges? That just kind of share with us, kind of your what you're seeing from uh, from the market viewpoint. Like like I said, right now mostly new construction. Okay. Um, you know that market was just so dead a few years ago when they were competing with foreclosures and short sales, okay. and and so it kind of went away. But but now it's just red hot. Um, there are people that are coming up, and and uh, this particular builder, like like I said, that I'm working with, he just does custom homes. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, people are loving it. And there's enough demand there to keep him busy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I think he's got 14 in the ground right now. That's just him. Hey, would wow. You, or, or, would you, or would you rather come up here and get into the uh, knockdown, drag out fight for existing homes and get in there <laughs> with the six or eight or ten offers that are going on? Or can you just make a smooth transition by contracting with and have a property built for you and you move in and it's ready for you? I mean, that's a that's got to be helping at least. Uh, some folks got to look at that and just say, well, look, I just don't want to get in the in the mix and the mess of trying to bid on these existing properties I, where I can have my own built to my custom specs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. look, look at people coming. Well, they're coming up from all over California. Remember, 40 percent of our sales here are from people from the outside of the area coming in here. So that still leaves 60 percent of these sales from people here either moving up, moving down. Uh, are you having problems, Brian, finding for people? Like in my condition, or my condition, like myself, <laughs> I want to sell my place and get a smaller place along the way, but I have no place to go. That that right there is probably the single biggest reason why. Again, if you look at the statistics, um, how there were 233 sales last March. I'm sorry, May. Yeah, last May in 2016. Right now, 186. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's nowhere to go. Yeah. So if you want to downsize, um, those are the homes that are that are pretty much flying out the door. Yeah, and, and those that's, are the... that's such a conundrum because it's such a hot <laughs> seller's market. And probably a lot of these people that were considering that or would like to do that have the equity back now mm -hmm. to make a really good move. But where, where do you land? Well, see, I have equity back in my house. So, you know, so do you. New construction. I, but I don't want a new house. See, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I want a tiny home. Tiny I want home, something yeah. small. I, don't want, I want a mid mid sized. Tiny, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we're gonna see. Have, I could have an eight foot ceiling. I think. don't want to go to an apartment. I don't think I want to. <laughs> no. do, I'm too old for that. No, I, but, I uh, lived in dorms. But for trying four to years. find a place is not easy to do. I mean, and people <laughs> are making sales contingent upon them yep. selling their place yep. or find. I'm sorry, finding a replacement home, and that sometimes uh, it's 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 pretty hard to do. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I have a client right now that, that's coming up from the Bay Area, which she'll she'll see, you know, five or six homes she wants to look at in the 315 under range. And it, it just, you know, she, she'll say, she'll get here and she'll go, is it still available? I, you know, I'll tell her yeah. it's, it's minute by minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you're absolutely right. You, you, you don't know when you see a pending sign or something happening like that. Do you advise your clients to, to get backup offers on some of these things if they really want something? Because sometimes, a lot of times, they fall through. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, you don't know. I had one the other day that they it sold in one day, and and then unfortunately the the people had to back out. And so out. we did have a backup offer. You see, backup offers are good. We I got showed, a, we got a break coming up here. I showed so. twenty two homes in three days <laughs> Memorial Day weekend because my folks were from Nevada, mm -hmm. and you absolutely had to be here and hit the ground and work it, and and it paid off. But it took some real work for him. That's it's tough being out of town. All right, the real estate show continues here. We got to talk with Brian Schlafkin, our John L. Scott Market Watch show for June seventeenth. Pete and Joe are coming right back to KMED after this. Here at The Real Estate Show, we've begun our sixth year of weekly programs and are pleased to tell you that John L. Scott Real Estate of Southern Oregon is a new partner on our shows. In the coming weeks and months ahead, you'll meet Jim Remley, the managing principal broker, and others who make John L. Scott Real Estate the top-selling office in the region. In the last 12 months, they've sold over $600 million worth of property in Jackson County. So we welcome John L. Scott to The Real Estate Show family. You can visit a John L. Scott office in Medford Center or downtown Ashland. A great home starts with a great mortgage rate. Hi, my name is Guy Giles, sales manager at Ditech Mortgage. I'm committed to finding the best products and rates for my clients. As a direct lender and servicer of our loans, we can offer low rates on VA, conventional, FHA, and USDA loans that others cannot. Let me show you by giving me a chance to compete on your next home loan. Call me at 541-944-6987. 
Ditech Mortgage is your home loan lending partner you can count on. Did you know that more than 400 square miles of the Rogue Valley drain through Bear Creek? Do you know what else ends up in the creek? Everything that goes down the storm drains. Leaves, animal waste, garbage, landscaping, even pesticides all end up unfiltered right in the creek. That's water residents of Jackson County depend on. At Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District, we have free resources to help you make a difference right where you live. Look us up at jswcd.org or find us on Facebook. After all, it's free. And the only thing better than free is clean water. Choosing All Cities as your property manager will bring you peace of mind. Hello, I'm Laurel Adams, co-owner of All Cities Property Management. For the past 13 years, our business has provided homeowners with detailed monthly reports, including exact copies of vendor bills and explanations of work performed. We use these same procedures and have systems in place to create optimal communication between you, the owner, and our office. Contact us to discuss your individual needs at 245-8811. We provide property management with peace of mind. The Jackson County Home Builders Association is your resource for home construction information in Jackson County. Your HBA can answer questions for everything you want to know about home construction, remodeling, and more. I'm I'm Brad Bennington, Executive Officer of the Home Builders Association. Your HBA supports the home building and remodeling industry and advocates for safe, sustainable, and affordable housing. Learn more about the benefits of doing business with our members at hbajc.com. A great home starts with a great mortgage rate. Hi, my name is Guy Giles, Sales Manager at Ditec Mortgage. I'm committed to finding the best products and rates for my clients. As a direct lender and servicer of our loans, we can offer low rates on VA, conventional, FHA, and USDA loans that others cannot. Let me show you by giving me a chance to compete on your next home loan. Call me at 541-944-6987. Ditec Mortgage is your home loan lending partner you can count on. Rental owners often tell me the thing they like most about our company is that we have organized systems in place and respond in a timely manner. Hi, I'm Laurel Adams, co-owner of All Cities Property Management. Today's property management requires a professional who can negotiate the gap between renters and rental owners. At All Cities, we work to protect your investment while following Oregon and federal rental laws. We provide property management with peace of mind. Visit us online at allcitiesprop.com. Pete and Joe, the real estate guys here, and thanks for listening to our show here on KMED Radio. Every week for almost the last six years, we've shared real estate-related information with you and hope that you'd learn from us in our panels, too. We personally talk with many of you and offer free advice on property values, do's and don'ts of selling and buying, and lots of other topics, too. So feel free to contact us anytime via email at Pete or Joe at realestateshoworegon.com. And And thanks thanks for for making making the Real Real Estate Show part of your weekend. The Real Estate Show continues here on KMED. June the 17th is our date. Pete Belcastro here with you on this date here in the KMED studio. Lots going on next week here on The Real Estate Show. Glenn Cunningham will be along. We'll talk about 1031 exchanges and when and where they're appropriate to use and why you would want to use one. And Glenn uh, has seen a a big increase of those since the last time he was here. Well, it was last June, so he'll be along next week. Of course, you can catch all of our shows anytime at realestateshoworegon.com. And, of course, we invite you to do that as well. Some terrific shows in the past, everything from tiny homes, solar options, uh, affordable housing. I mean, we've learned so much. Our listeners have learned so much uh, here in the last few months, uh, some of the issues that are out there that, uh, well, you deal with in the the real estate business, that's for sure. Brian Schlafkes is our guest today here on the show. He's a real estate broker with John L. Scott in our Market Watch show. And, well, the first segment, we've been talking about the slope statistics, market things, things going on. It's it's an interesting thing. Brian, do do you you, you talk about it's been a seller's market? You yes. know, that that, that, yes. that term that people do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's misinterpreted of what that actually means. Uh, and by, by sellers, I'm saying mm-hmm. sellers think that, well, if it's a seller's market, I can get this for my property. <laughs> but that really sometimes isn't really the case, is it? Well, our, our fail-safe is our appraisers. Our, they, the, the uh, appraisal, yeah. Yeah, you know, you can you can ask whatever you want. You can you can take whatever the buyer is willing to give you. But, mm-hmm. but the bottom line is if there's a loan involved, there is going to be an appraisal, and um, if if it's off, then pretty much start off as you got square to, one. Someone's got to give somewhere if the mm-hmm. appraisal is off. Have you been seeing that in your experience, or have appraisers have appraisals been coming in pretty much in line with what the sale prices have been? 
You know, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm using that word loosely. Yeah, um, I will. I will have some that will appraise. That just I'll scratch my head and, and wonder how it happened. How, 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 and then I'll, then I'll have some that'll come in way under, and I'll also scratch my head and wonder how that happened. Yeah. So, you know, we're dealing with human beings, and an appraisal is just basically an opinion of value based mm-hmm. on, on, on uh, recent sales. So, um, yeah, I try, I try to uh, uh, work with my clients and, and uh, do my, my homework with comparables and, and show them what I think, where I think an appraiser mm-hmm. is going to come in so that we don't have that big letdown uh, from, from a bit. Uh, yeah, short appraisal. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than the appraisal. The, nope. the appraisal's wrong, and and uh, and either the buyer or the seller have got to, you know, rectify that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you're mm-hmm. right. If it's a loan, it's it's uh, it's going to have an appraisal. If it's cash, well, it makes a whole a whole. You don't even you don't even need an appraisal. You don't even mm-hmm. get an appraisal most of, mostly. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's it's a big difference there, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. And tell me about loans that people are getting. Are conventional FHA? Where where are people heading that you're dealing with today? Well, you know, again, it's just pretty much across the board. Earlier in the year, I I did uh, a, a lot of um, uh, uh, basically nonprofit homes out in uh, White City, and and they're almost all USDA, the hundred percent financing. And, uh, so I haven't done that in a while, but that was, that was huge. And then, uh, now it's, it's a good mix of conventional and, uh, FHA. Mm -hmm. And of course, interest rates Are people talk about interest rates with you, or they just know that they've, you know, crept a little bit. They're still, you know, low, obviously, historically. Uh, what do you, what do you hear about that? You know, when I started, I I started in 1990 and and the rates were up around 16, 17%. (laughs) And, and then when they hit 14, I thought, you know, holy macro, we're, we're in heaven here. And then Mm -hmm. as they continued down, you know, my, you know, when they got down to three and people were telling me they're going to wait till they go a little lower, mm-hmm. I don't think they're ever going to go to zero. But uh, right now, as of today, I checked and they were right, right around about four and, four and an eighth. Mm-hmm, yeah. And uh, that is such an amazing loan. Um, people, you know, they don't, they really don't. I mean, I think they've kind of gotten to where it's taken for granted that they're just going to be low. Yeah. They're yeah. just great rates. And my, my first house was 17% interest. Exactly. You know, and, and people say, Ooh, yeah. yeah, exactly. It was. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. Well, at least it's, well, if they're out there, they're, they're going to want to, you know, find the best loans you can. We have great lenders around and, uh, and, uh, you can certainly do that, but it's the lending has certainly tightened from what it was pre Recession. That's oh. where I hear that all the time from everybody who's come in here and everything. And you agree with that? Oh my gosh, we we had people that if they could fog a mirror, they could get a loan. Yeah. I mean, they had no income. They had. I mean, it was just all stated. Yeah. You know, and they were they were people were buying homes that that had no right. You know, or, mm-hmm. or I shouldn't say that had no income. I had not enough income to make the payments. You couldn't make the payments. Exactly. It, but but uh, they were able to do that, which was, as we all know, kind of a mm-hmm. bigger of our downfall. And, uh, but now, no, no, they've got some pretty good safeguards in place. Um, it's, it, you, you definitely have to um, go through mm-hmm. a lot more hoops. Is there anything that concerns you uh, when you look at all, you know, statistics tell great stories. And of course, in housing statistics, it's just, there's just so much of it. Is there anything that concerns you uh, about the market, uh, Brian, that, uh, you know, it's always in the back of your plane in the back of your mind at all? The bubble. I, uh, yeah. I, I, I lived through. Well, a lot of us lived through that, and that that wasn't fun. That just, you know, it was, you know, on the roller coaster ride up, it was fantastic, but but the prices just kept going up and up and up, and then all of a sudden, you know, we thought, well, a little dip in the market, but then as we know, you know, it, it fell off the table for mm-hmm. a good number of years, and and uh, that concerns me. That that um, again, going back to the statistics, the five year uh, change just in West Metro was one hundred and forty four percent. Yeah. It can't, it can't sustain that. No. And, and the prices, when the, the assessor was in here a few weeks ago, at uh, Dave Aerosmith, and that's a, you know, it's a concern if they have double digit increases across countywide. And we've had that now mm-hmm. for two years in a row. Mm-hmm. And it would seem like, I mean, of course, sales were down, you know, the, uh, the first part of this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people say, I couldn't have been. Well, it was because there was no inventory. The demand was still there, but there wasn't enough to sell. So actually sales were we're down, mm-hmm. uh, but that seems to be changing. You, did you sense that too? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's just been like I said, red hot. But you know what, what was what was kind of interesting in the last few years is when when we had that great seller's market, and then mm-hmm. it, then it, then it became a buyer's market, and then yes. and then almost not not quite overnight, but it, it jumped up pretty good to a seller's market. I would be tickled pink if it just balanced out. 
you know, we used to, historically used to go up about 6% a year, you mm-hmm. know, in, in the Valley here. And that was great. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but like you said, going up 12%. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's caused because uh, of low inventory. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So if the, if the inventory pops up, I mean, the summer we're here mid June, if we're here next month or in August, it's obviously is going to increase. It seems like, uh, is that enough? I mean, do, do it have an effect at all or just, uh, the demand is still is still there. Yeah. Well, you know, then the, the we cross over into affordable housing um, yeah. because that's going up and up and up. Also, yes. That's why, like I was mentioning earlier, the that two hundred thousand dollar home with 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 five or six offers on the mm-hmm. same property. Um, I, you know, I don't know. It, it it seems like the supply and demand. I mean, the sellers with with that home is going to go. Whoa. You know, I can I can offer two and a quarter. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can ask two and a quarter if they're getting that many. Mm-hmm. So and, and just, that's what and that's what's happening. Yeah. Speaking of affordability, I, I always watch uh, the affordability indexes, which which uh, the National Association of Realtors and those kind of you know keep track of in different communities. And this is the first time, by the way, and I've watched this thing for nine almost nine years, you know, uh, doing the show. And this is the first time I've seen that the affordability index, where it is more affordable to own a home now in jo- I'm sorry in Jackson County than it is in Josephine County on the affordability index hmm. that 100 is the score where it's even you you want it to be as close to 100 as you can hmm. and the first time in May of, of last year that number now is 101.8 uh in uh, Jackson County and it's dropped to 89 from over 100 in Josephine County so that, when I saw that that's the first time I've ever seen that that is now more affordable in Jackson County that's that's just doesn't make sense, no. but I, but it's it's true. Yeah, yeah. In back, some ways, back in the in the late two thousands, um, Jacks Josephine County was definitely hit pretty hard with yeah. the uh, you know the recession, and uh, that's interesting. That's and, if it, and if it wasn't for USDA loans, <laughs> the, the the housing market in Klamath, Josephine, and Douglas County would have just would have disappeared during those years. And mm-hmm. now look how it has also come back as well. So that's really good. People who lost a lot, they've now gained back this. And of course, owning your own home and your own property still remains the best way to generate wealth for wealth for somebody. And uh, so it's still a, a robust place. And they better not met the legislature and all the kinds of things, Brian, they all talk, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do away with mortgage interest deductions. And we're going to, we're going to, it's so easy to tax real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, the industry itself is really quite geared uh, to combat that on behalf of consumers. It would just dis- destroy mm-hmm. everything if that happened. Yep. Now, one of the things, Brian, also we got a break coming up here. One of the things, Brian put out a note this week. Uh, he wanted to know if w- anybody knew what the value of a working marijuana farm would be today in Jackson County. That's one heck of a question. And that is one heck of a way. How do you answer that question? We're going to pose that to him and see if we can figure out of that a little bit when we return here on the Real Estate Show on KMED. We're coming right back right after this. Here at The Real Estate Show, we've begun our sixth year of weekly programs and are pleased to tell you that John L. Scott Real Estate of Southern Oregon is a new partner on our shows. In the coming weeks and months ahead, you'll meet Jim Remley, the managing principal broker, and others who make John L. Scott Real Estate the top-selling office in the region. In the last 12 months, they've sold over $600 million worth of property in Jackson County. So we welcome John L. Scott to The Real Estate Show family. You can visit a John L. Scott office in Medford Center or downtown Ashland. A great home starts with a great mortgage rate. Hi, my name is Guy Giles, sales manager at Ditech Mortgage. I'm committed to finding the best products and rates for my clients. As a direct lender and servicer of our loans, we can offer low rates on VA, conventional, FHA, and USDA loans that others cannot. Let me show you by giving me a chance to compete on your next home loan. Call me at 541-944-6987. Ditech Mortgage is your home loan lending partner you can count on. Did you know that more than 400 square miles of the Rogue Valley drain through Bear Creek? Do you know what else ends up in the creek? Everything that goes down the storm drains. Leaves, animal waste, garbage, landscaping, even pesticides all end up unfiltered right in the creek. That's water residents of Jackson County depend on. At Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District, we have free resources to help you make a difference right where you live. Look us up at jswcd.org or find us on Facebook. After all, it's free. And the only thing better than free is clean water. 
Choosing All Cities as your property manager will bring you peace of mind. Hello, I'm Laurel Adams, co owner of All Cities Property Management. For the past 13 years, our business has provided homeowners with detailed monthly reports, including exact copies of vendor bills and explanations of work performed. We use these same procedures and have systems in place to create optimal communication between you, the owner, and our office. Contact us to discuss your individual needs at 245 8811. We provide property management with peace of mind. The Jackson County Home Builders Association is your resource for home construction information in Jackson County. Your HBA can answer questions for everything you want to know about home construction, remodeling, and more. I'm Brad Bennington, Executive Officer of the Home Builders Association. Your HBA supports the home building and remodeling industry and advocates for safe, sustainable, and affordable housing. Learn more about the benefits of doing business with our members at hbajc.com. A great home starts with a great mortgage rate. Hi, my name is Guy Giles, sales manager at Ditech Mortgage. I'm committed to finding the best products and rates for my clients. As a direct lender and servicer of our loans, we can offer low rates on VA, conventional, FHA, and USDA loans that others cannot. Let me show you by giving me a chance to compete on your next home loan. Call me at 541 544-6987. Ditech Mortgage is your home loan lending partner you can count on. Rental owners often tell me the thing they like most about our company is that we have organized systems in place and respond in a timely manner. Hi, I'm Laurel Adams, co-owner of All Cities Property Management. Today's property management requires a professional who can negotiate the gap between renters and rental owners. At All Cities, we work to protect your investment while following Oregon and federal rental laws. We provide property management with peace of mind. Visit us online at allcitiesprop.com. Pete and Joe, the real estate guys here, and thanks for listening to our show here on KMED Radio. Every week for almost the last six years, we've shared real estate-related information with you and hope that you'd learn from us in our panels, too. We personally talk with many of you and offer free advice on property values, do's and don'ts of selling and buying, and lots of other topics, too. So feel free to contact us anytime via email at Pete or Joe at realestateshoworegon.com. And, and thanks, thanks for, for making, making the Real Estate, Estate Show part of your weekend. Real Estate Show rolls on on KMED. June 17th is our day. Pete Belcastro here with you at the KMED studio. Hope you're having a terrific weekend. Make out something happen. Good weather out there. And uh, next summer's on. Vacations around. Fourth of July coming up. Boy, with the cruises coming up in Medford, there's just lots of uh, lots of good events. So hope you'll get out and spend some time out there today. Brian Schlafke's in the house. He's a broker with John L. Scott in Southern Oregon. We've been talking about the market and the conditions here in uh, Jackson, Josephine County. And, uh, well, one of the things that, that we haven't talked about or a little bit about rural properties because they certainly are, are out there. They, they, it has slowed down a little bit in terms of the, I think, the demand for them uh, somewhat from what it was a year or two or two ago is the recreational marijuana world you know became part of our of our world as well as well and uh, brian put up a question i thought that was very interesting you asked other agents uh, about the value of a, of a current working i guess we're working farm is what i used to saying but a current uh, i guess cannabis farm uh so tell me about just just kind of the story of how you got to that because uh, i think our listeners will find it very interesting because what is the value of something like that Man, Brian, that, that's a tough one. It, yeah, it is. Um, sold the property a few years ago to to a client and uh, turned it into that. And um, and uh, another opportunity came along. So we're kind of putting out feelers now that it's got uh, some, some plants on there. And as I was telling you, you know, what I really know about this, I put right on the head of a pin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so what I did was we've, we've got uh, somewhere in 150 agent range in our John L. Scott office. So mm-hmm. we have an inner office email. So I, I put out the question, you know, for people that maybe know more no than more, I do, no more than, yeah. uh-huh. uh, what, what, where they would value something like that. And I've had probably 10 agents that, you know, have responded to, really? to the question uh-huh. and, and in some potential interest in, uh, you know, they have clients. In, in, in buying it. Okay. Yeah, in buying and buying it. And they have clients okay. also. All right. But, um, yeah, you know what, did they, what, did, what were some of the things that they told you? I'm curious as to what uh, what you learned about that. Then, what, did they, what are some of the things that create value with that? Uh, irrigation, 
I Irrigation mean, is big. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know, and you probably see in our in our daily emails. You know, people uh, have a client looking for X number of acres. Got to have irrigation. Got to have irrigation. You know, you land irrigation. You pretty much know it's not cows. Right. It's not. No, it's not. It's not cows. Yeah, it so, used to be cows, but not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cows are in wooden fences. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but irrigation and um, uh, good soil. You know, they do soil test, mm-hmm. and you know some of these guys are pretty smart farmers, you know, in their own sure. right. And, and, uh, so I've, I've learned a lot that way about how much attention and how much you really have to pay attention to what you're doing on these because they can go south. And if you, if you don't know what you're doing and growing uh, cannabis, you, you're going to, you're going to lose tons of money and mm-hmm. not going to have anything to sell. And you're, you, you, it's a lot of work. It mm-hmm. truly is. I said, people here know that my nephew is a grower in California and it's a lonely life. Uh, and it's a hard life. I mean, they mm-hmm. work really hard, uh, at times of the year, you know, when they plant and have this stuff mm-hmm. in the ground. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, this particular case, you know, they're, they're going, going and, and, uh, you know, there, there's an estimate of when the harvest is, but then there's also where they are in their, in their growth cycle mm-hmm. you know, okay. of value. Yeah. And because, uh, people that, that know, know the business, they know that, between the time now and then whenever harvest is, I guess in the fall, in the fall, you know, things can happen. Yeah. So, so the value then is, is not this, necessarily the value now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you could, anything could happen. You could get rot, but you could get must, you could get all sorts of things there. Yeah. So do you buy a pear tree with no pears on it, knowing that there are going to be pears or, you know, it's, it's a tough one. And the difference there is that the, the pear tree comes back every year with pears <laughs> and the cannabis, you got to regrow it and reseed it, redo everything with it every year as well. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's interesting uh, as you bring this up, because obviously uh, the, there are so many issues out there. We hope to have Sheriff Nate Sickler, by the way, uh, join us here uh, in, in the next few over the summer here for a show uh, to talk about these kinds of things and enforcements and, and all that comes along with it. Do you think that the, the cannabis industry it's affected real estate, hasn't it, Brian? Real oh estate God. prices. Oh my gosh! I was looking at again the rural st- statistics and and one here on um, uh, over ten acres back in twenty twelve the average is around three fifty and then uh, twenty seventeen five hundred thirty thousand yeah so yeah you know pe- people have it's a huge increase average it is. isn't it it is for rural properties yes yeah well I wonder and I don't do do you think it's slowing down a little bit I I sense that that it's not the rush that uh, was like a gold rush for a while. Mm-hmm. I, I don't sense that that thing happening right today. Well, I still, you know, during, in our office, we'll see one to two a week. People yeah. have, have somebody, but yeah, I, I agree. There was, there was quite a, quite a mm-hmm. uh, flurry there for a while. Yeah. I wonder where it's going to go and all the things and the prices and, in and, and all of this are out there. Uh, we created a, a, you know, billion dollar industry here in obviously Jackson and Josephine County. We're the epicenter of growing. There's mm-hmm. no no question about that. Mm-hmm. We grow the best in the world here. So, you know, we got to deal with all the things that 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 comes with it. Yeah. And I don't think we're settled yet uh, with it. Do you? I mean, I, I don't think I think voters may have a uh, come back again at some point and readjust what uh, what may or may not be allowed in your in your counties based upon the experiences maybe this year as well if there's lots of complaints mm-hmm. i don't know it's uh, yeah, yeah. I've, but, I've had clients call and say i want to move because somebody has a grow right behind me and yeah. it stinks yeah and, or look at that horrible <laughs> fence i mean the, the, <laughs> look at the, and, and then what they were putting up guard towers mm-hmm. and and cameras and this kind of stuff so you know neighbor it, it, i don't know it's it's uh it's it's out there isn't it and mm-hmm. it's not settled i guess that's what makes it interesting for you know, people to talk about like us uh, because it's not settled and there's a lot, long way, to, long way still to go. Anyway, well, we'll the, the marijuana thing is never settled, is never going to be done, uh, but it's, um, it's sure with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's part of our, uh, part of our world now, Brian. And uh, I don't think that's going to be changing anyway. So we are almost out of time here uh, as you go into the summer. So you're, you're expecting a big summer, obviously, uh, but the big thing probably is listings are going to increase. We think. <laughs> we hope. We Our hope. office had 41 of them this last week. Yes. That was a lot. Yeah, that, was, there, that was a lot. Yeah, there were 48 on the multiple listing uh, this morning. And, and that that includes Klamath and, mm-hmm. and uh, Grants Pass. But, um, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we just hope. What I've seen is in, in past years, you know, once school's out, it, it, it did tend to slow down a little bit just to, up until about August when people start thinking, oh, I want to go into a new school district. You know, mm-hmm. let's get my house. But uh, right now, you know, it's still it's still just great. We're going to have a big tourist year, um, also, you know, because uh, we, great water year that we've had. Lakes are full. I mean, all of that is uh, is such a positive. We're going to have lots of people visit uh, 
our region. And some of them are going to say, hey, you know, I may want to stay here. Mm -hmm. uh, as school gets started, you're right. Some of our schools and um, it's a, it's a, we, we all live here for a reason. And our secret, you know, is, uh, is out as we know. <laughs> And uh, we're seeing we're seeing uh, we're seeing the result of that. Yep. And, and it's not going to slow. I don't think it's going to slow down because people want to come here. I think so. And I think again because the supply is low. Yeah. Um, you know, demand's going to stay up. And so that makes it a seller's market continuing. We want to get back in balance. That's our <laughs> goal. And we'll see if we get there sometime in 2017. We may not. I don't think we even will. Brian Schlafke, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. You can find Brian at Google. He's at John L. Scott uh, as well. Brian, so thanks for being here. That'll do it for the Real Estate Show here for June 17th. For Pete and Joe, have a great week, everybody. God bless you all. We'll talk to you You've next Saturday. To the Real Estate Show on KMED Radio, presented by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, along with John L. Scott Real Estate of Southern Oregon and Bank 34 Mortgage. For guest contact information, download our free app or to watch a past show, visit us online at realestateshoworegon.com. This show is produced by Table Rock Productions. Join us again next weekend for Southern Oregon's one and only real estate show on KMED. And thank you for making the real estate show part of your weekend.